Good evening. Uh, really a pleasure uh, to be here. I hope uh, there are as many as possible of you there. Actually, as a negotiator, it uh, feels a little bit weird to talk to an unspecified audience. However, as a hostage or crisis or cyber crisis negotiator, I feel quite uh, confident talking with Anonymous because this is actually what uh, I do from uh, from time to time. So uh, let's uh, let's start um, by um, introducing myself. Actually, it's quite easy. Uh, you uh, uh, already saw. I will share screen. I really don't need to talk about the obvious in a cyber uh, online uh, conference. Uh, we all know that ransomware market soars. Uh, 2500 uh, uh, percent um we see the price or the value of uh bitcoin uh, dramatically uh increases uh we know that ransomware sales on the dark web that's actually a cool thing it means that ransomware as a service uh, whether you have a nasty competitor or you want to hack your uh, wife's uh, uh lover uh, computer uh, you can go down to the dark web and buy ransomware as a service and um, see the numbers it's it's quite uh, it's quite dramatic and also what we all know is that um, 88 percent of the 600 uh, it decision makers surveyed report that their organization characterized their existing archiving solution as problematic which means that the usual um, advice for dealing with ransomware uh, backup, backup, backup is very nice when you write beautiful article about it. But uh, once you are hit by ransomware, the figures and the percentage of those who have an insufficient uh, uh, backup is, uh, is 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 dramatic. I I don't want to talk about all this. I I rather prefer to talk about what we still uh, don't don't know. And this is the uh, the the secrets of how actually to negotiate with. Uh, in 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 situation of cyber extortion uh, we, we we all understand that there are like three level of uh, of uh, cyber uh, of cyber extortion malware no negotiation this is a computer or a machine uh, made you don't negotiate with machines run somewhere some negotiations which i will uh, talk about in uh, a couple of uh, of minutes and the um, the significant, much more important, interesting, this is where the industry goes, uh, cyber extortion. And this requires the um, specifics or the characteristics of uh, crisis, uh, of crisis uh, negotiations. Um, there is a very, you know, small, medium, actually, publishing house uh, somewhere in uh, LA um called me the guy um i don't know found my name uh, over the uh, the net and um tells me that he got a ransomware uh demand we all know how it looks like uh it is not necessarily this one but uh, they asked for uh three bitcoin which at that time was about five thousand uh, US uh, dollars, and um, I, you know, I asked, I told him actually, you know, my service will cost you more. So, but I don't know there was something in his uh, request, in his voice, that made me, uh, uh, you know, jump in. And um, what we did is um, Sam, the guy, just. Uh, email the email that was provided in the ransomware uh demand and uh, wrote uh, exactly exactly that uh that uh, um, sentence oh um i see that bitcoin is quite expensive i can probably get one if i'm lucky will that work where would i send it how do you help to recover my funds thanks you for the, your advice this is exactly the text that uh, uh sam uh wrote to the Russian guy, we know Russian because the uh, uh, email was, as you can see, was uh, in in, uh, in 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 Russian, and the message uh, uh, received back was quite surprising. 
1.5 Bitcoin to agree on price. And you can hear the heavy Russian accent here in this. Uh, and then and then payment instruction, you can uh, you can say so actually by sending this email, asking three uh, uh, asking uh, a discount it was not even an explicit request for a discount by saying uh, I can get one immediately price reduced by 50 percent. Um, it, it's it's quite it's quite uh, it, you know interesting. It was one of the uh, not very rare incidents that actually when people ask me what to do is I said always try to negotiate regardless the fact of you have uh, or you don't have backup. Actually, if you have a quite good backup uh, minority, as we said, of the uh, of the IT of the companies. Uh, you can delete this ransomware, go to the backup, go to the IT, and then we'll recover everything. However, if you don't, and you consider even paying, and uh, uh, two-thirds of IT uh, um, professionals has admitted that they would consider all paid in case of ransomware, uh, just before you pay, try to uh, uh, bargain. Um, it's interesting to notice, and this is something that I discovered actually a couple of uh, uh, weeks after. It was the whole exchange was in the week gearing up towards the uh, uh, Christmas, and what we found later on on the uh, on the uh, on the darknet uh, is that there were some Christmas discount. Uh, uh, so you know, being very very service oriented. All these cyber criminals realize that uh, if they want to encourage people to pay in uh, holiday uh, uh, time, why don't they just uh, offer a Christmas uh, discount? Um, as funny as it seems, or as interesting as it seems, this actually uh, uh, follows one of the interesting. Uh, tips that I can give when it comes to negotiating ransomware. Follow the email that Sam wrote. Oh my, I see that the Bitcoin is quite expensive. I can probably get that. That's a statement. And then a set of questions. Will that work? Where would I send it? How do you help to recover my files? Three questions in one email. Why we do that? We do that because one of the very important classic uh, rules of um, crisis negotiation is keep the hostage taker busy in decision making. Uh, watch this, uh, see this beautiful clip of Metro Eddie Murphy uh, many years ago. What actually, what actually did Eddie Murphy? He asked him questions in order to make him, the other side, the, the criminal, the hostage taker, to be concentrated on sort of a mini decision making. Why we want to do that? We want to do that because the business model of um, ransomware is traffic 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 the moment you start negotiating bargaining asking questions keeping the hostage taker busy with some sort of decision making actually he loses money because instead of answering your email or you replying to you he can move to the next uh, uh, victim so when it comes to ransomware since the business model is based on traffic and a lot of people paying a very little uh, amount of money, I would strongly recommend once you consider or you have second thoughts about uh, uh, not good enough backup, just negotiate, bargain, ask questions, make them feel that you're interested in what they're doing. However, 
you find it very difficult to uh, pay the, the ransom. I would like to move now to the to the second uh, to the second uh, level, third level of, of uh, cyber events, and uh, after malware and ransomware, and this is the cyber extortion. This was uh, it is a blurred screenshot that uh, um, a CEO of a financial institution uh, uh, got uh, on his uh, email. He opened it. He saw this screenshot. He immediately realized that, is, uh, uh, that these are his company's screenshot. And five, six minutes after he got that, on his mobile, he got this uh, WhatsApp message. That was a small tip of iceberg. Hopefully those proofs are sufficient so far. And then came the, runs, the, extort, the ransom, the extortion uh, demand. Our demand is a single non-negotiable payment. 500 bitcoin without any further sanction from our side so far we only extracted data without damaging or trading in this is the implicit uh, threat this could be either a real world penetration testing or an event that will damage your brand in an irreversible way just think what a leak of all that on the relevant form an article on the relevant magazine and other places could do and then was a personal hook the criminals wrote, we don't want you to end like Ashley Madison, CEO. We're all familiar with the Ashley Madison case. This is not a personal matter. And watch this smiling. Why these people sending this dramatic 500 Bitcoin was a lot of money. That, at that time, it was about 150,000 US dollars. Why they send the smiling? The CEO immediately replied you see in three minutes i can't end up like him but i like the examples i have no idea why he said i like the example but you know maybe he thought uh, ashley madison you know cheating side is uh, is a cool stuff um this is the point of time that actually they assemble uh, quickly um a crisis management uh, team which i talk about it a bit later and they called me in uh, uh, to negotiate. As a hostage negotiator, we have to be aware about the differences between real world hostage taking and the cyberspace. Similarities, damage and risk level. Uh, we all know that uh, cyber uh, terror or cyber uh, attacks could lead to uh, a loss of human life. And in both cases, there's a very complex ecosystem. However, the differences determines the way we approach um, uh, cyber uh, extortion. Uh, there is no real operational alternatives. By the end of the day, hostage taking, whether it's kidnapping, you, you deploy uh, intelligence uh, resources, you can find the actual physical place of the hostage, uh, let alone if it's a barricade situation that actually you know where the people are. And, and, and the law enforcement uh, surrounding the, uh, uh, the building. But in the cyberspace, there's no operational alternatives. There was one uh, uh, CEO that told me, you know, Moti, I, you, can, you, can, I, you have one million US dollars, just find me the bastards. Um, this is almost, uh, almost impossible. I'm not saying uh, I'm an Israeli, so I will not say it is impossible, but it's very, very uh, challenging. The second difference is that there's no professional management. In military or uh, criminal cases, there is already a professional setup that actually knows the rules and the basic manuals, uh, the rules of procedure, how to uh, professionally manage the, the case, whether it, will be, um, whether it will be successful or less successful, we still don't know, but it is professionally managed. Uh, in the cyberspace, there are no guarantees, no guarantees that if you will pay the ransom or pay the extortion money, uh, you will get your uh, data back or you will not be extorted again. And as I said before, there is a dramatic practice of payment, significant practice of payment in the uh, cyber, in the cyber uh, 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 sphere. So if we want really to understand cyber extortion negotiations, we have to answer four uh, um, uh, questions. What are the hostages in the, in, in the cyberspace? What are the types of potential loss? What are the types of motivation? And what's the purpose of the negotiations? And this is, again, just the tip of the iceberg of understanding the logic behind cyber 
um, negotiations, cyber extortion uh, negotiations. When it comes to hostages, um, the, 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 the classic are, you know, we're all familiar, the threat of published data, <clears throat> Ashley Madison uh, uh, case, uh, Netflix uh, case, threat to abuse data. This is a significant, uh, uh, significant more challenging, legally challenging uh, uh, level of identity theft. Some companies, uh, security, uh, social security numbers, uh, passports, personal information that can uh, be abused, uh, used in, in identity theft, and then, you know, who you think you are, you are not actually. And uh, a threat to suspend service in uh, uh, online uh, uh, gaming, shopping, this is a dramatic loss. Internet of Things, many talks here in this conference talk about IoT and uh, um, the risks uh, we have in um, dis disturbing or distortion in the uh, in services. And what bothers me the most is the issue of personal injuries which means that you can really um, destroy life of human being by using cyber uh, uh, attack. Uh, you get uh, someone in the middle of the night, the police with a search warrant knock on your door and said, we got the information that uh, you have, uh, you're a pedophile and uh, there's pedophile material on your computer and you look at the, uh, the policeman and he said, you have no idea what they're talking about. They take your computer and they find they're, they're like, uh, uh, you know, 500 uh, giga of uh, child pornography that someone planted in your, uh, in your computer. If you were lucky, you got a message before asking uh, the money. And if you're not lucky, now the, 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 the battle of your life uh, actually uh, starts. So when we speak about cyber extortion, we all understand that this criminal market is just making the first moves uh, in, in, uh, um, in, in a dramatically violent, brutal, and, and uh, nasty um, environment. Type of losses. We are all aware of direct financial losses, suspension of service, and uh, uh, we understand that if uh, uh, Alibaba or Amazon servers are down, we understand direct uh, financial losses. We understand also the indirect financial losses, the brand, the legal consequences, all the legal action that can be taken or the brand uh, reputation. But being involved with many uh, managements and boards in, in, in the last three, four years, uh, I see that the what the consequence of the thing that the damage that people are less aware of is damage to the structure of the organization, the relationship between the CFO and the uh, CISO, and to whom the CISO reports, um, a significant breakdown in the relationship between the board and the, um, and the management. These are the, um, I would, you know, sometimes people call it soft, but these are not soft uh, at all. Companies that got hit by dramatic uh, cyber extortion, I'm not talking about ransomware, about cyber extortion, the um, structure, relationship, uh, I'm not talking procedures, but structures, relationship of the companies changed and it takes a lot of recovery, long recovery time in order to really uh, um, get over the, the, uh, uh, the attack. Type of motivations. There are three types of motivation. Uh, money, just people want uh, money. It was, uh, it's it's uh, uh, simple as I described. But there are two other types of motivation that really determines the way you approach the, uh, uh, you approach the, the, uh, the event. Revenge. This is a guy who was unhappy at some point with a dating uh, uh, site. Um, exactly like the Ashley Madison uh, perpetrator was not was a frustrated employee 
that realize that 96% uh, of the uh, profiles, of the women profiles are fake robots, uh, or fake or robots. And um, many times people just want to take revenge in the company or in the service provider. Um, they don't want anything instrumental. They're not interested in money. They're interested in um, uh, taking revenge. Just uh, a very strong expressive uh, motivation. The third motivation is white hat hacker. Uh, this is a, a Polish guy that uh, at some point attack one of the uh, big uh, chips, uh, micro chips uh, producers. He wrote all the negotiations uh, and he shared in his blog all the information. And this is White Hat. And the purpose is really in their perspective, repairment of the world. However, while repairing the world for good cause, they can cause a lot of damage to other uh, 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 companies. First step in what we do is we try to complete a profile, having in mind the three motivations, whether it's money, whether it's revenge, or whether it's a white hat. Uh, uh, and just example of the profile with this financial company, um, they, they wrote to me, this is not a traditional business deal where you can do that. And we are not, the kind of people who need just some kind of quick money. So why 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 they here if they if, if they are not here for the money? At some point they presented themselves as APT28. APT28 is a proclaimed uh, operational arm of Russia doing all this cyber attack. And they presented themselves as, as APT28. Uh, uh, and I asked them, are you really APT28? And said, yes, correct. And then I try to tease them a little bit and I ask them, so why you move from the cool government stuff to this business? Is this the low oil price at that time? The idea is to engage in conversation and find more uh, of, the, of, of the messages that they send. Since we have ethics, we would prefer the first option, which means that we'll pay. Some companies nearly collapse after they saw what can happen. And uh, based on the... Uh, track record of, uh, of the industry they, 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 they attack of this financial uh, uh, sector, uh, they were right in the, were accurate in this, in, this, uh, in this threat. Once you complete the profile, you start to ask yourself as a crisis manager, as a crisis negotiator, what, what's the purpose of the negotiations? And there, there are actually uh, uh, three, three steps three purposes the first is negotiating for a better deal which i will uh, uh expand uh, we we'll talk about in a second the second is negotiating for intelligence sometimes you just spend time negotiating in order to gather information first of all about the scope of the attack many many it professionals many it professional excellent it professional with whom i work couldn't tell us in the first two-thirds of the event what actually was hit and whether the uh, 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 the criminals really possess the data they 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 have and uh, it's very important uh, to to talk to converse to conduct a professional uh, technological conversation in order to gather the relevant intelligence usually for the other cybersecurity companies the third purpose is to negotiate for a professional uh, negotiate for a professional uh, for operational advantage uh, and this and this is the were times definitely when the motivation is revenge or white hat where actually you uh, people i would say it very carefully less careful in that particular uh, uh, in that particular case I would uh, use my negotiation uh, um, advantage in order to really locate the, uh, uh, the criminals and put my physical hands uh, 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 on them. When we say negotiating for a better deal, uh, what, uh, what do we mean? What, what do we, we mean when we say negotiating for a better deal? Uh, you have, again, three objectives. First, assess the cost of no deal, very important. Second, reduce the amount to pay, bargaining, or improve the terms of the deal, and all in order to support a better decision-making process. A better decision-making process 
means that you as a crisis manager, you are not a decision maker. You as a crisis negotiator, you are not the decision maker. Your purpose is to bring information and data like a good trusted advisor, professionally uh, um, produced or achieved or gathered in order to help decision makers to decide whether they pay or they don't want to pay. In this case that I, I present to you, I'm, I'm, I'm writing to them, very, very straightforward. I'm trying to assess the damage to my company if we don't agree. What you took from others is much more valuable because they shared with us some of the information they took from others, for competitors in the market. And please don't take it personal, I said. You are very competent professional, that's only business, I'm very careful on, 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 on the way to talk, but what I'm telling them that, you know, don't be suspicious what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to understand what will happen if I'm not paying. And, and the, 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 the response was very blunt and immediate. Tell the board to be thankful to receive our term through you and not through our well-polished reminding system. Uh, you, can, you can imagine yourself the very famous scene of uh, Austin Powers, this uh, evil guy say, uh, laser. Uh, so uh, not through our well-polished reminding system that we decided not to turn on yet. Uh, you know, having this conversation through, and these negotiations were conducted throughout, uh, you know, two and a half months, months, almost, uh, uh, you know, 10 weeks, uh, I had a very good sense of whether they are serious uh, 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 or not. Another thing that we try to do during, when we try to negotiate a deal, is the flexibilities. I all the time try to reduce the amount to pay. We do not offer gentlemen discount, they told me again and again. This is not exactly a retail store and holiday season don't make you eligible. You have to understand that coming here and have this discussion with you extreme, make, make you extremely lucky considering the other options. Until now, almost a month after the events, which means four weeks into the negotiations, none of your system were attacked again and not single bite of what we have made it to our outside our service. Again, that was uh, uh, right. And then after, you know, probably it was eight weeks into the uh, uh, negotiations, I understand the flexibilities and then I put some of the um, elements in the deal that I would like to conduct with them. Six payments, uh, you know, willing to pay the 500 uh, Bitcoin, six payments, um, each payment to go, we go deeper on your advice regarding our security. So suddenly, this is not paying the ransom, suddenly, or oh, slowly, not suddenly, slowly, slowly, it turns to be a penetration test that actually we pay 150,000 US dollars, not a lot of money, for a very, very uh, successful penetration test. And note number seven, don't you ever rest because always keep the personal uh, uh, dimension. They were a bit shocked with my proposal. They said six, payment, six payments over what amount of time? I would love six months first. Uh, payment today, six months, they were laughing. I wanted to prolong the process because it was my business interest to make sure that they, they are not sharing the data with our competitors. Did I have a guarantee? No, I didn't have a guarantee. How I was show, so sure? Because I'm talking with these people for eight weeks now. Um, uh, we we moved towards, uh, uh, towards a deal and they write me, uh, the way we can do it is two equal payments. After the first one, we tell you exactly how you were breached and which system are most vulnerable. So it becomes a penetration test. This is something we never do, but consider it's a gesture of goodwill for the CEO. The second part of the payment should arrive no later than and then there the was a date. And, and I replied uh, uh, immediately, and this is why we appreciate your attitude. I never recommend moving forward based on a virtual contract, but with you, I feel we have this atnashenia. Atnashenia is the Russian word for relationship. And this is a whole uh, uh, seminar about the meaning of trust and relationship in, in the Russian uh, context. At some point later that afternoon, they wrote to me, Bitcoin price went from 238 to 236. So you already have a 1000 discount, but don't uh, bet it will <laughs> keep going down. And then of course I reply with laughs and uh, uh, love. To end the deal, well, I guess you will have to put a little trust in an entity. And then I connect again to the Russian 
context and I said, how do you say in Russia trust but verify very the Vereni Prevere, a very famous uh, concept used by President Reagan in negotiating with Gorbachev uh, during the uh, uh, during the 80s. One lesson. I saw this uh, uh, um, article a couple of uh, uh, months ago after the Netflix uh, hack. Uh, I don't know who is uh, Danny De Palazzido, uh, but the title, Netflix Hacker Makes Hilariously Ineffective Demand, this is something that I would never write. Why? Because you never know who reads it, because you always should assume that you might come across these people and respect, respect, respect is the key to have this, uh, um, I would say, successful uh, outcome. My last point is about management of cyber crisis. And this is one of the things which dramatically um, lacks today. When a company is hacked, these are some of the professionals and tasks and uh, uh, issues that come into the, uh, uh, it's, uh, the business partner, the CEO, the board, the IT, the legal, the finance, we have negotiators, we have insurance companies, we have the PR and the media, we have security companies, internal, external, forensic investigation, but this becomes very quickly a uh, cacophony because it lacks this professional crisis manager. The professional crisis manager is someone whose role is just to coordinate and to process, and it cannot be, it cannot be the IT or the CISO guy. If you're interested to learn why, just Google uh, Monte Crystal Fuck Up Nights Tel Aviv, a great uh, series of lectures, events, and then I share one of my fuck ups when I failed to persuade the CEO not to put the IT guy or the QA guy at that, uh, in that context to be the lead negotiator or the lead crisis manager because his uh, reputation, his profession, his credentials were on, on the degree and he could not really manage a crisis in a uh, um, non-biased, he, uh, um, he was geared or motivated or uh, uh, channeled by his uh, emotions, by thinking about his future, personal future. And when a crisis hits, a cyber crisis hits the company, my strong advice is to bring a professional manager, someone who's outside of the company or someone who is not involved in the periphery of the event to manage the, all these interrelated um, elements of the uh, uh, of the deal. Bottom line: professional crisis negotiation as well as crisis management is a fundamental component in dealing with cyber extortion and ransomware attack, as well as preparing. But preparing, we all know that we should uh, 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 prepare. So that's that's my uh, uh, take for uh, uh, tonight. Feel free to contact me. You have. Uh, my uh, mobile number 24 7 all around the world and um, good luck and prepare guys um, uh, there was a question may I uh, <laughs> what was the most uh, difficult case you had to work on oh well my my uh, past experience uh, uh, my past experience is the is in the Israeli Palestinian uh, negotiations so uh, there is still unfinished uh, uh, task uh, there, this was one of the uh, most uh, um, uh, most most difficult, uh, unsuccessful. But as I said, uh, look at the uh, fuck up nights, uh, Tel Aviv, Monte Cristal. You will find the, the the video, the talk there on the web. Uh, Tom asks, uh, how did you get into negotiating with cyber criminals? I'm a crisis negotiator. This is what I do in my uh, I used to do in my military reserve. To, so sometimes today I consult still crisis, uh, uh, crisis hostage uh, negotiations. 
but it was a very natural transition from the world of physical uh, crisis and hostage negotiation to the cyber. Once you really adjust the, uh, to the fact that many times in the cyber world, you're the only person who stands between a complete you know, collapse or catastrophic damage to the company uh, and, uh, and, and, and the attackers and the criminals. In the real world, actually, you have always the SWAT team, the guys who can storm the, the, uh, the building or storm the, uh, or use, use, use a force. Um, uh, unlike uh, most of the great Hollywood movies, the negotiators, uh, um, etc., um, in real life, I would say that uh, in criminal, you know, it depends on culture. Most of the cases end up with uh, military and operational or uh, storming of, uh, of, of, of the building. Uh, in the cyber world, this uh, alternative doesn't exist. Uh, therefore, uh, the more cyber extortion, the more uh, important will be the role of the uh, hostage uh, or crisis negotiator adjusted from the real physical world to the world of, um, of negotiations, of cyber. And as a crisis negotiator, we always tell the bad guys what we do because they might suspect that I'm pulling a gun. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Good luck. Mm -hmm.